Heavy Sports has just proposed a wild three-team trade, and I'm here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dario from Knicks Digest. Let's get right into today's video. Heavy Sports has just proposed a wild three-team trade that includes the Warriors, the Utah Jazz, and the New York Knicks. As you can see here, the Golden State Warriors would receive Jericho Sims and Julius Randle, where the Utah Jazz would receive Miles McBride, Moses Moody, and Andrew Wiggins, and the New York Knicks would receive Walker Kessler, Kevon Looney, and Colin Sexton. The first thing that I would notice from a New York Knicks fan, we finally get a backup big to support Mitchell Robinson. We actually get two backup bigs, Kevon Looney and Walker Kessler. Now, if this was about two, three months ago, I definitely would have said that we should have made the trade because I'm a big Julius Randle critiquer. I'm not sure how high the ceiling of the team is with Julius Randle being your best player or being your second best player on the team. But... As of recently, I have changed my tune about Julius Randle. I actually want to see Julius Randle being able to complete the season. At least Julius Randle, give him one full season if everybody's healthy to see how far the ceiling of this team is with the Jalen Brunson, the re-signing of OG Ananobi, the trade for Mikhail Bridges, Dante, Josh Hart, and a healthy Julius Randle. I think with that core group, I think we're able to compete and maybe even challenge the Boston Celtics to reach the NBA Finals this upcoming season. But... Like I said in the beginning of this video, one of our gaping holes in the roster is we do not have a backup big to support Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson, as of late, has been an injury-prone player. In the last six seasons, two of those six seasons, he's played 31 games. And if you take a look at the Boston Celtics roster, the championship roster where they won... Chris Tass Porzingis, when he was healthy, he started, and then Al Horford came off the bench. Those are two veteran bigs. Chris Tass Porzingis, who just stretched the floor with three-pointers, who can take advantage of his matchup in the post. Al Horford, who could also spread the floor with three-pointers, but he's also well adept to be in the post making moves. And asking Mitchell Robinson to guard both of those men with not having enough support coming off the bench would be too much for him. Walker Kessler, if you take a look at his numbers for last season, playing for the Utah Jazz. Last season, he played 64 games, 8.1 points, which is his sophomore season I should add seven and a half rebounds 0.9 assists 65.4% from the field 21.1% from three point and converting 60% from his free throws now Walker Custer even though he's only had two seasons in the NBA he is already looked at as one of the young up-and-coming defensive uh, all-stars in the league and of course whenever a particular player comes up I gotta do a little bit of research and even though Walker Custer has only had two seasons so far in his NBA career his rookie season 2022-2023 he played 74 games, averaged 23 minutes, averaged 9.2 points, 8.5 rebounds, 0.9 assists. He averaged 2.3 blocks, whereas this most recent season that finished, he averaged 2.4 blocks. So we're looking at 2.5 blocks on average. A little bit that I do know about the Utah Jazz this past season was that Walker Kessler, he was kind of in and out of the lineup. I'm not sure if it was personal reasons. I'm not sure if it was reasons to do with the team. Um, I'm not sure exactly. But it's interesting because after his rookie season, he actually was able to be a part of the USA FIBA World Cup team last summer where they ended up in fourth place. And I'm, I don't think he was a starting big. I think he might have been coming off the bench, but you would expect that someone being named to any USA team, if it's an Olympic team or World Cup team or any, ki or any kind of USA tournament team, you would think that Walker Kessler would be probably highlighted in the, the roster for his team. But with the Utah Jazz, he was in and out of the lineup. And again, I'm not sure what that was about. But as far as Walker Kessler, that was definitely one of the biggest highlights from this mock trade from Heavy Sports. Now, of course, we also got to take a look into how Jericho Sims and Julius Randle would be leaving the Knicks and going to the Warriors. And also how Deuce McBride would be going to the Utah Jazz. With Deuce McBride going to the Utah Jazz, I feel like we'd be able to supplement his loss with a Colin Sexton. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Colin Sexton. I like the way he plays. He's he's an he's an absolute dog, especially on the defensive end. And after some years in the league, he's been able to pick up his offensive game. But coming into the league, that's what he was known for. He was more known for his defensive prowess, if anything. And Kevon Looney, Kevon Looney, what can you say about him? He's been a reliable big for the Golden State Warriors. I believe he has at least I believe he has those three rings. He was on the two teams where the Kevin Durant was on the Warriors, and then he was on that team where they beat the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals two seasons ago. So I believe Kevon Looney has three championship rings. So the type of championship experience he's be able to bring to the team, be able to talk to his teammates about sacrifice and what it takes to go that far in the NBA playoffs, going to the NBA Finals, and what it takes to win a ring. So... Like I said earlier in the video, if this was maybe about three, four months ago or in the middle of the season that just happened, I think I definitely would have been a go for this trade. I definitely would have pushed a button and said, send Julius Randle to the Golden State Warriors. But 
I, I t- I've changed my tune, man. I really want to see how Julius Randle is able to handle this situation with the Knicks because you can arguably, you can make the argument that this is the first time that the Knicks have been in a viable position to be an NBA championship team. I don't think they, I don't think they're expected to win the championship next season. Not at all. I do expect that the NBA media has them going to the Eastern Conference Finals minimum, but with the contract and negotiation that Jalen Brunson just had with the New York Knicks, and I believe it was $113 million less that he took for the contract, and then he put Mikael Bridges in a viable situation to sign with the New York Knicks for an extended period of time and the rest of his Villanova boys, like you can you can make the argument that the Knicks are going to have a window of maybe like four seasons where they're going to be a viable team to make the NBA Finals or even win it. Well, this upcoming season might not be the season where everybody's expecting the Knicks to win a championship, but after this season, seeing how everything plays out, hopefully if everybody is able to stay healthy, we're going to be able to see how high the ceiling is. We're able to see how everybody gels together. Julius Randle with the Villanova boys, Mitchell Robinson with the Villanova boys. And that's kind of why I'm not pushing the go button with this trade. I just really want to see Julius Randle. I want to see him being able to grow his game. I want to see him grow in different aspects of the game, not just offense or defense. I want to see what type of leader he'll be on the team as being one of, if not the best player on the team. I got admit man if we didn't make that Mikael Bridges trade I think I might have pushed the go button with this trade we get everything we asked for we asked for a young up-and-comer defensive player in Walker Kessler we're getting an experienced championship veteran in Kevon Looney we're going to be losing Deuce McBride but we're going to be able to compensate with Colin Sexton Colin Sexton who you can say has a little bit more experience in the NBA who has a little bit more experience in the playoffs as well like Every, every question that we have as a Knicks roster would be able to be answered with this mock trade. But it's also interesting to take a look at Julius Randle and the Warriors. So if Julius Randle were to join the Warriors, he'd be joining a Steph... He'd be joining a Steph, a Draymond. Clay, Clay obviously wouldn't be there. He went to the Dallas Mavericks. But him joining Steph and Curry and Draymond Green, that's a very interesting three-man lineup. And how how Julius Randle would be able to work off of Steph Curry and Draymond Green would be very interesting. He'd definitely be put in a different situation. Draymond Green setting everybody up. The chemistry that Draymond Green and Steph Curry has... It's, it's something that I haven't seen in quite some time. So Julius Randle being able to fit in between them two, I would definitely like to see that. That would definitely be something interesting to see. But as of right now, our roster still has that question mark of a backup big. Mitchell Robinson is our starting big, and we don't have anybody right now. There's been rumors that the Knicks are linked to Clint Capella. There's rumors that they're still talking to Precious Achua. So we're not exactly sure where Leon Rose or World Wide West, where they're leading. We're not sure if there's a player that they're targeting that Knicks fans we don't have in, our, in the forefront of our mind right now. So we just got to wait and see. But man, the more and more I think about this trade, Walker Kessler coming to the Knicks, backing up Mitchell Robinson would be chef's kiss. Young up-and-comer defensive anchor who is, even though he's only played two seasons, he's been durable for those two seasons. He has World Cup. He has World Cup experience. He's played with enough talent around him to see how the dynamics of a team with a lot of stars works. Altering shots, grabbing boards, setting setting the good screens for Jalen Brunson, Mikael Bridges, Dante DiVincenzo. Like I said, everything that we're asking for, we're asking for a backup big. We're getting a veteran championship player in Kevon Looney. Colin Sexton being able to take over Deuce McBride. What more can you ask for this trade? But as of right now, it doesn't look like the Knicks are going to be training Julius Randle anywhere anytime soon. So so the current roster of Brunson, Randle, OG, Mikhail, Dante, Josh Hart, Mitchell Robinson, and that's what it's going to look like for the upcoming season. So we just got to wait and see what Leon Rose and World Wide West, what they have up their sleeve. But guys, that's it for today's video. I want to say thank you so much for checking it out. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think about this pr- proposed trade by Heavy on Sports, sending Julius Randle to the Golden State Warriors alongside Jericho Sims, and the Knicks receiving Kevon Looney, Walker Kessler, and Colin Sexton. But until next time, you guys know the drill, you know the vibes. Jalen Brunson for all the MVPs, Taj Gibson for president, Deuce McBride for co-MVP, Mikael Bridges for the 2024-2025 Defensive Player of the Year. And until next time, I'll check you out in the next video. Peace.